What made a difference? This is a nice satellite picture of Korean Peninsula. This shows the remarkable economic difference between South Korea and North Korea. I am a Korean. We had the same human capital and physical capitals were rather more in North Korea. Then what made the difference? My research started with this question. My name is Taehyun Yu. I am a PhD student in economics at Australian National University. I am going to share my study on institutions and development, the relationship between different kinds of institutions, how they are related, how to prove the relationship empirically. Diverse books and studies found the answer to my question. Yes, it is institutions. Olson finds that neoclassical variables do not account for economic differences between countries. The structure of incentives, which is clearly distinguished by national boundaries, is the root cause of the differences. They are saying political institution, institutions restrict economic institutions, then economic institutions determine the incentives of economic actors and shape the economic outcomes. But there are so many kinds of institutions, how they work together or how they are related. Many theories and hypotheses try to explain the relationship, which is called the hierarchy of institution hypothesis. Institution is a not a single variable. There are so many kinds of institutions. There are diverse vari variables to explain various institutions. Let's see the first law. This is a fundamental model of hierarchy of institutions Williamson proposed. It says there are four levels of social analysis in which the higher level directly restricts the lower level and the lower the provides feedback to the higher. The most basic assumption in this framework is slow moving institutions have a causal impact on the change of fast moving institutions. The hierarchy of institution hypothesis is further developed by S. Moleto and persons. The details are a bit different, but the big frame is very similar. There is a consensus in diverse theoretical frameworks saying that institutions are endogenous and political institutions affect economic outcomes through economic institutions. So in this study, I want to ask how do the different types of in institutions interact? How do they affect economic performances? Can the hierarchy institutions hypothesis be verified empirically? Let's move on to identification strategy. The fundamental empirical challenge is when trying to identify a relationship between institutions and economic outcomes are endogeneity and unobserved heterogeneity. I summarize the identification strategies of key papers on the relationship between institutions and economic outcomes in my paper. Panel fixed effects model can control not only the impact of observables but also the impact of time invariant unobservables. But there still remains endogeneity problem that is caused by reverse causality. In instrumental variable estimation can address endogeneity properly but has been rarely utilized in a panel study. Since most instruments are geographical, cultural, or historical factors that are constant over time, so time variant variables cannot be controlled for. Alternatively, this study uses panel ID model based on the interrelationship between different kinds of institutions called hierarchy of institutions. Also based on the previous studies saying political institutions are the primary determinant of economic institutions and determine economic outcomes through economic institutions. Also, I think the best way to show the hierarchical relationship of institutions is using instrumental variable method. As you know, the exogeneity of instruments cannot be tested statistically. So we need to appeal to history, theory, and some post-estimation tests. Here are some rationales 
for its originality of using panel IV. First, I assume the radical changes of transition countries in 1990s were exogenous. Uh, after the collapse of the communist regime in the early 1990s, they have experienced sudden widespread and exogenous structural changes in institutions and economic structure. So these features are used to control endogeneity problems. Many studies found even if the instrument is not perfectly exogenous, it can produce informative results. So based on the hierarchy of institution hypothesis and this plausibly exogenous idea, I use the political institutions as an instrument in a panel setting. Uh, lastly, one evidence is the falsification test. A falsification test cannot prove the assumption holds, but can provide decisive evidence when the assumption fails. Here is the result of the falsification test. Political constraints are statistically significant with diverse control variables from column 2 to 7. But when accounting for privatization, political constraints turn to statistically insignificant, you can see in column 8. Let's turn to data and estimations. I selected a political constraints from Hennis for the proxy of the political institutions because political support is essential for economic stability and economic reform policy, especially during the transition period and it has been widely used in previous studies. Also, I used the privatization from EBLD for the proxy of uh, economic institutions because privatization is the most characteristic uh, variable that shows the changes in economic system of transition countries. This table provides the correlation metrics and collinearity diagnostics. You can find uh, the variance inflation factor and tolerance value in the last two columns. The mean of BIF is 1.91, so there is no evidence of multicollinearity. This is a summary of main results. Fixed effects and two-stage least squares estimate indicate that economic institutions has a positive and statistically significant effect on economic performance. Also, the F statistics on weak instrument test provide evidence that an instrument using political institutions is strong and valid. Also, the endogeneity test results show that the economic institution is endogenous in all instrumental variable estimations. As a robustness check, I used alternative dependent variables I selected a uh, five-year average GDP to control macroeconomic variables with high volatility and GDP per worker since it is the direct determinant of economic performance and the variable itself represents the economic performance. This is a falsification test when using GDP per worker as dependent variable. You can see a similar result saying after accounting for privatization political constraints turn from statistically significant to insignificant. Also, this table shows a uh, positive and significant relationship for these two alternative dependent variables. Also, from the result of post-estimation test, uh, it says the on instrument is valid and uh, regressor is endogenous. I will briefly summarize the results. The two-stage list squares estimates report that economic institutions have a direct, positive, and statistically significant impact on economic performance, and the fixed effect estimates support this finding. Political institutions are the profound cause of economic performance and influence economic growth through economic institutions. The hierarchy of institution hypothesis holds by uh, using political institutions as an instrument. However, the results are based on crucial assumption that political institutions affect economic performance only through uh, economic institutions, which cannot be tested statistically, so it can only appeal to 
history, theory, and post-estimation results. To conclude, institutions matter. Institutions make economic results, and those institutions are the product of history. And the underlying factor that makes the difference is institutions. Also, institutional changes have a sequence or a hierarchy. Political institutions set the stage, and economic institutions work in that stage. Uh, political institutions determine economic institutions that create economic performances, which means uh, the hierarchy of institution hypothesis is a valid concept. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your participation.